Welcome to the second part of our Balance of Payments lectures. Now, before we broke down the current account, and for this lecture we'll break down the capital and financial accounts. And as the name suggests, the capital and financial accounts include both the capital and the financial accounts. Now we're going to look at these two accounts separately. And they refer, or they account for, record non-current transactions. Okay, so let's look at the capital account. Well, the capital, the balance on capital account, that only includes one subcategory, and that's the capital transactions category. Capital transactions. Now we've talked about capital in our analysis of supply side conditions, and this capital is no different. It generally involves the net inflow. And in Australia, this is an inflow rather than an outflow of funds by permanent migrants. As well as the net acquisition of non-produced non-financial assets. And this can be a very uh, tricky concept to understand what non-producer, non-financial means. But that's just jargon. What it actually means is that this is transfer of buildings or tangible non-current assets. That isn't securities or money. So this include say buildings, copyright, patents, franchises, trademarks of a tangible nature. Okay, so we looked at the capital accounts and that basically refers to the net acquisition of non-produced non-financial assets, so here, as well as the net inflow of funds by permanent migrants. So if we were to migrate, or if someone from China were to migrate to Australia, then the funds that they would bring in would be put in or classified as a transfer of the capital kind. Of these two items, capital transfers are by far the largest item. So here, I must note that this is called capital transfers. This is by far a greater proportion of the capital account. Now let's break down the financial account. This this is a lot uh, a lot messier. It's a lot more subcategories of the financial account. So the financial account records uh, the following transactions of financial liabilities and assets. So it records financial assets and liabilities. And what assets are is what we own, and what liabilities are basically what we owe to overseas or non-residents. So first we have net direct investment. And what this is, is that this is the purchase or expansion of companies and assets in Australia by foreigners. So it is when we directly invest, invest in companies in and out of Australia. So say China wanted to take over BHP Billiton, this would be an example of a net direct investment. Secondly, we have net portfolio investment. And this is very similar to net direct investment, except that this is of a much smaller magnitude. So net portfolio investment involves dealing with shares, debt, securities, 
and exchanges. So it is the assets minus the liabilities of net portfolio investments, so shares, debits, securities and exchanges. And this usually relates to a less than 10% ownership of a company, whereas net direct investment is where you over you overtake a company from as a as a non-resident of the country. Thirdly, we have what is called other investment. And this is basically includes uh, assets minus liabilities or credits minus debits of other loans, deposits, and trade credits. So this is everything that doesn't fall into the category of portfolio or direct investment. So every other type of investment. Fourthly, we have what is called reserve assets. And this is to do with the RBA and what they have as financial assets. So RBA is trading. So this can include the RBA's trading of borrowing currencies, gold, spe special jewelry rights um, with the International Monetary Fund. And we won't go into depth with the reserve assets, but it is what the RBA and the government transacts over what they transact between different countries, which includes foreign currencies, gold, and other such RBA-related transactions. And finally, because we know that this all falls under the category of the balance of payments. So we just remind ourselves of the balance of payments. We know everything must balance. And I'm going to highlight this balance here. So everything must balance. And so because we currently have a current account deficit, to make this balance of payments balance, this should equal the capital account surplus. So how do we make this account balance? We're going to um, put a fifth category which we're just going to write here a final category which is called net errors and omissions and this is the balancing tool used to balance the balance of payments to an extent so when this category is taken into account the positive balance in the capital account will balance with the negative balance in the current account and so that's how the balance of payment is essentially summed up to be zero or the capital account deficit so the current account deficit equals the capital and financial account surplus okay so that is the capital and financial account it would cause the non-current transactions between residents of Australia and non-residents and it can be split up into two separate accounts and although most cases we talk about them as a singular entity, the capital and the financial accounts.